Welcome back. Peace and blessings be unto you from the Most High God and through His risen Son, our Messiah, the Christ. Now I want to talk to you about some of the things we, can, we need to do to prepare for this tribulation. Some of us will be martyred and be resurrected at the second coming, and some of us will be alive enough, will be alive, excuse me, to see the second coming of Christ. But no matter which group we're in, the Most High has given us commandments and encouragement on how to survive this uh, situation. First thing we have to do is to get right with the Most High. Okay, that's the first thing. We, when, we, when we are right, we have the protection and guidance uh, from the Most High. That shields us from demonic forces, demonic possession, oppression, and any uh, ills or evils that may come our way. In the news, we've been seeing a high level of demonic possession, which the news brushes it off as mental illness. Even when Christ healed and restored someone, he usually said, go and sin no more. Sin breaks fellowship with the Most High and the Holy Spirit. Uh, when the Holy Spirit, uh, when sin is around, Holy Spirit leaves, which leaves us vulnerable to demonic suggestion or possession. I'm not saying everything bad happens to us is the forces of evil. So what is sin? 1 John 3 and 4. Whosoever committed sin transgress also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. How do we stay right with God? Revelations chapter 14 verse 12. Here's the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. Now earlier I mentioned demonic possession. For those who receive the mark, they will be completely opened up for a demonic host, to be a host for demonic forces, excuse me. There is no grace from the Most High, no help from the Holy Spirit, no help from, no help from Michael and his angels. You are completely given over to these dark forces. Revelation chapter 14, verse 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive the mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his in indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 9. Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways, and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. For such as in their life have received benefits, and have not known me. And they that have loathed my law, while they had yet liberty, and when as yet place of repentance was opened unto them, understood not, but despised it. The same must know it after death by pain. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. So again, everyone at some point has had or will have the opportunity to be saved to know the truth and to come back to the Most High, to, to learn about the mark of the beast and to educate themselves. But the vast majority will reject the opportunity and despise us for telling them the truth. So this goes right along with scriptures, okay? And the consequences for rejecting the knowledge is clearly, is clear in the scripture. I know this doesn't feel good to hear because most of us have some loved ones, people we grew up with, and we want them to know the truth. But the Most High really doesn't care about how we feel about the situation or what we think. The prophecy is written and the written word is the written word. What we can do is pray to the Most High, pray that he intervenes, opens their eyes and give them an opportunity to come back before it's too late. Second Ezra chapter 9 verse 13. And therefore be not thou curious how the ungodly shall be punished and when, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved whose the world is and for whom the world is created. So, part of the commandment of the Most High, we cannot concern ourselves too much about them, rather focus on how we will be saved. So after we got right with the Most High, confessing our faults, getting rid of sin, relying on Christ and leaning on the Holy Spirit and guidance for protection, guidance and education, 
Once we get all that right, now we have to start, now we have to start operating in faith. I'm not talking in the sat satanic faith and, oh, I believe for a bigger house, bigger car, husband, wife, whatever. The faith that's going to save us in this end time. I'm talking about the real faith. To know and believe that the Most High will do what He says He will do. Nothing more, nothing less. So let's, let's look at some script. 2 Timothy 1 and 7. For God have not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So we can't say we have faith that He will save us, deliver us, but at the same time being worried, fearful, and stressed about what's going to come. Okay, we have to keep cool, calm, and collected as we prepare and warn others. When Peter began to walk on water, he had faith. But when it started to lightning and thundering, he got afraid and worried, okay? So fear negates faith. So let's look at some scriptures of what we need to have faith in and what we need to do. Okay, now I'm gonna go into the Apocrypha, which is part of the Bible. It was taken out around 1880s, right after slavery, for some strange reason. Okay, so this is scriptural. Don't let anyone tell you different. I'm going to do a lesson on the Apocrypha. But now we're going to go into Ezra. Okay, Ezra was having a dream, uh, some, some dreams, about the last days. Okay, what we're about to go through. Okay, so he was asking the Most High to give him, to give him some interpretations of these dreams. And the Most High is explaining to him what's going to happen in the last days. Okay, so let's go through a couple of scriptures. 2 Ezra chapter 16, verse 40. O oh, my people, hear my word, make you ready to thy battle, and in those evils be even as pilgrims upon the earth. He tells you to make ready to the battle because in the pre previous verse he says people will be invading each other's houses for a lack of bread. That should tell you that it's going to get physical. He tells us to be ready as pilgrims in the earth of that day. We need to be ready to move from where our comfort zone is in the physical uh, to another location. Christ said, if you're persecuted in one city, flee to the next. Now, as we're preparing spiritually, he tells us the mindset we need to have. Let's take a look. Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 41. He that selleth, let him be as if he that fleeth away. He that buyeth, as one that will lose. He that occupieth merchandise, as he hath no profit by it. He that buildeth, as if he shall not dwell therein. He that soweth, as if he should not reap. So also he that planted the vineyard, as he shall not gather the grapes. They that marry, as they shall not get no children. And they that marry not, as the widowers. And therefore, they that labor, labor in vain. There you go. Based on your personal situation, you have been told by the Most High what mindset you need to have to make it through this. The scripture throws the entire prosperity message out the window. Now you see reasons why they don't want you to read this book? Because they can't teach the prosperity message, oh money comes, don't worry for your, house, your big house and car is coming, when he tells you the mindset you have to have. And he tells you laboring in this world system, you're laboring in vain. Let's take a look. 2 Ezra chapter 16 verse 46. For strangers shall reap their fruits and spoil their goods, overthrow their houses, and take their children captives. For in captivity and famine shall they get children. And they that occupy their merchandise with robbery, the more they deck their cities, their houses, their possessions, and their own persons, the more will I be angry with them for their sin, saith the Lord. So all this material wealth will be taken and enjoyed by others, the ones who join this world system. He said he's going to be upset with us as we continue to deck out our houses, get new cars and buy all this material, take out loans on houses and cars while we should be stocking food, we could be learning new survival skills, we could be planning for these emergency situations that will take place. Now, I'm not saying we, should, we shouldn't go out and enjoy ourselves. In the wisdom of Solomon, it tells us that we should enjoy our leisure time. So whatever free time you have, you wanna make sure you take advantage of it. But we shouldn't be wasting our time, money and resources on stuff that's not going to on stuff that's not going to help us when this goes down. Remember, other countries are already in the thick of this. Other countries are in the beginning stages of this, but when it comes to us, it's going to hit us hard. Again, we cannot operate in fear. Fear gives them power. 
It gives Satan, the fallen angels, and the demons power. So when we are in fear, we can't listen to the instructions of the Most High. So let's continue with some of his instructions. Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 67. Behold, God himself is the judge. Fear him. Leave off from your sins and forget your iniquities to meddle no more with them forever. So shall God lead you forth and deliver you from all trouble. Here's another admonishment to get rid of our sins because when we do, the Most High will be able to guide us and deliver us. Deliver us from what specifically? Second Ezra chapter 16 verse 70. For there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon, upon those that fear the Lord. They shall be like madmen, sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. The word mad is talking about a state of mind regarding insanity or extreme craziness. Remember, one of our curses was we'd be struck with madness and astonishment of heart. But let's look at this word mad. Uh, turn to 1 Samuel chapter 21. 1 Samuel chapter 21 verse 12 And David laid up these words in his heart and was sore afraid of Ashish the king of Gath and he changed his behavior before them and feigned himself mad in their hands and scrabbled on the doors of the gate and let his spittle fall down upon his beard then said Ashish unto his servants Lo, you see this man is mad? Wherefore then have you brought him to me? John chapter 10 verse 19 there was a division therefore again among the Jews for these sayings and many of them said he hath a devil and he is mad why hear ye him also you remember the story of the madman who was possessed by demons he had superhuman strength and super superhuman powers they couldn't bind him with chains they couldn't control him he was self-harming himself now the reason I'm talking about this is because you have to realize during this time that we're about to go through, Jacob's trouble, there will be a high level of demon possession worldwide. In order for demons to enter, enter, enter into a host, there are a few things that must happen. First, they need an entry point. That entry point is a simple lifestyle, not a slip up or we have a few bad days, but again, a lifestyle where you, where you are committed to sin. Okay, that goes completely against this book, okay? Now, we know a lot of people that have this lifestyle that will make a candidate perfect for a perfect host. Now, with that, with that lifestyle, then another entryway they, they would need is drugs, okay? Legal or illegal. Any drug that affects the mental state, okay? Because again, you're not level-headed. So, the elite powers know what's going on, and in the news, they tell you it's mental illness, and they'll blame it on drugs. It's not mental illness. You're looking at demonic possessions. Okay, stay with me, and I'm going to tell you how this ties in for us to be prepared spiritually. But let's look at how some people are going to be mad men going from house to house trying to destroy the children of Israel or those who feared the Most High. I don't want to hear it. It's 10:30 a.m. We don't serve chicken McNuggets at this time. Yes, you do. No, we don't. Why not? Because we do. You what? <laughs> The world just fucking hiss at you. Hey, get your scummy ass out of the car. What's going on over there? Don't you fucking run away from me, you bad move. Yeah. Fuck up. Oh, shit. I'm the... Don't make me assume my ultimate form. I will fuck you up. Wait, I'm going to go there and I'm going to wreck you. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. I'm going to try to screw you. Look at the mess. Ma'am. Whoa, 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 whoa. Come on, whoa, whoa, whoa. Know who I am. Ma'am. Ah. What? Ah. Close that shit. In the last week alone, a couple of cannibalism and self-mutilation cases could be linked to bath salts. Freddie's story is not unique as a former user. It's unique because he is a survivor. 
How do you describe your experience? Because we see the video of you, and it looks like you're having these wild hallucinations, and you're mumbling and talking out of your head. What was going on in that video? What was happening to you? Darkness. Just, it felt like impending doom was coming down on me. And like, that I was possessed. I was possessed and I couldn't try to stop whatever was in me, and I couldn't try to stop whatever was in me from continuing further, and it felt like I was about to bust loose and actually hurt somebody. That's why that I was wrapped up the way that I was wrapped up in a fetal position and trying to keep my hands behind me and everything because I felt like something was going to happen and I was going to bust loose and it was going to be a really bad situation, and I'd never felt something like that before, some fear like that. and. It was one of the most horrible experiences of my life. I don't know why that I did it. It happened, it's behind me now, and I'm trying to move on from it and everything. You described this as, you said, was it like hell on the inside or the devil? How did you describe it? It felt so evil. It felt like the most darkest, evilest thing that is imaginable. I mean, I was going through something so severe and it be so dark and scary and everything. It was unimaginable to me and that's why that I couldn't grasp. I couldn't fully put my head around it and grasp it. And I was trying to calm myself down, trying to think about other things and try to basically keep myself whole. It's like sniffing demons up your nose. That is how the sister of Jesse Latillier describes the drug known on the street as bath salts. Tonight, how the drug may be connected to the apparent murder-suicide that left two adults and two young children dead in Blue Springs. It's like a synthetic killer drug known as Flaca is spreading rapidly across the United States and already causing an epidemic of overdose fatalities and acts of violence. We're talking about Flaca. Flaca. The drug is called Flaca. Some have dubbed it the insanity drug. And it's everywhere. It's been described as the scariest drug in the world. More powerful than heroin or cocaine. This is a synthetic drug that can alter your state of mind, raising excited delirium, body temperature, and literally losing their mind. They're all experiencing like superhuman kind of strengths. If it takes six policemen to hold them down, that's a problem. Psychotic breakdowns, hallucinations, aggressive, violent behavior, cannibalism and self-mutilation, indiscriminate violence when Flocka takes over. We are living in the context of the end of the age. We are a nation under judgment.
know who your family is. I know your father. I know your mother. I know your grandmother before you. So don't play with me, all right? Neither one of you. Get off that mic and go away from here right now. Or I'll make this nation rise against you. Do you understand me? Do you each and every one of you understand me? Don't play with the God that runs this earth. Now back away. In the name of Jesus. We have the victory. The blood of Jesus. The Bible says demons are within people. Now, again, if you take the mark, there is absolutely no grace. That chip is exactly what the devil wants you to take, and his demons need that chip for you to, to get for them to gain total access to your host. We are we as humans are vessels. We're going to be vessels for the Holy Spirit or vessels for demons, one or the other. Now we see in the Bible Christ casting out demons. We see his we see disciples, the apostles, and Paul casting out demons in the name of Christ. But this chip will completely negate that. Because remember, there's no grace. And where there's no grace, you have been given over to a reprobate mind and you are completely cut off from any grace. So, now, let's remove the chip out of the equation for a moment. Now, just imagine when this system collapses, there's no power, no internet, no access to medicine to suppress those mental illnesses. The daily sacrifice, our food has been taken away. They are unprepared. These people are unprepared in the spirit or in the natural how do you think these people are going to act? We see how they act during Black Friday when, and during the Christmas season when it's supposed to be the happiest time of the year. Are going to act when this system comes to a crash during an apocalypse again when the most high says, says make ready to the battle it's not just spiritual but it's physical as well while we continue to go through jacob's trouble we will be tried as gold going through the fire this will be this will be when the true believers will be revealed 
Spoiler alert, there won't be many of us. Now, let's move on to spiritual preparation. And remember, first, in our patience, we must possess our souls. We have to keep calm and know that we have been sanctified from the beginning for this moment. Second, confess our sins, clear our hearts, okay? We need to get rid of, when, when I say clear our hearts, we have to get rid of any unforgiveness or any bitterness that we have against someone else. If you offended someone, doesn't matter how long ago it was, pick up the phone, apologize, clear your heart, okay? And whatever wrong they've done to you, you have to forgive them, okay? So the Bible says if we don't forgive others, the Most High will not forgive us. So again, as we go through this, we have to have we have to have everything clear. We won't be perfect, but Peter warns us to be sober-minded because our adversary, the devil, is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. We can't be sober and clear-minded with guilt, sin, bitterness, and unforgiveness. Third, we have to put on the whole armor of the Most High. Paul tells us we are in a spiritual battle, and we need this armor to withstand, overcome, resist, and conquer that evil day. The evil day is already here, but it's about to get eviler. I don't know if that's a word. We have to put on, <laughs> we have to gird our loins, put on a belt with the belt of truth. That truth is the undiluted word of God. Now, that truth tells us who we really are. The truth tells us what time we're in. The, undili the un undiluted means we can't pick and choose what part of the book we want to follow and the part we want to believe in. It's the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Next, we have to have our feet with the gospel of peace. Everywhere we go during this time of Jacob's trouble, we have to have that internal peace that we're going to be taken care of. That the gospel, and that peace of the gospel, the gospel of peace, is the peace knowing that our kingdom's coming. The peace is knowing that Christ is coming to save us. That he's going to set up a thousand year reign where there'll be peace and prosperity for a thousand years. Okay? That's the gospel of peace. So when the lights go out, when it's time to be pilgrims on this earth, when it's time for these a heavy attack against God's people, we have to have that internal peace as we move through this dark time. Okay? Next is the breastplate, breastplate, excuse me, breastplate of righteousness. Righteousness in our thoughts and in our actions. If we don't have the truth of the word of God, we don't have the gospel of peace, it's hard to protect that vital organs through righteousness. Okay? That's what the breastplate protects. The heart, lungs, liver, whatever. But if you don't, you don't have the shoes, if you don't have the belt, the breastplate, you can't have the breastplate in righteousness, okay? Now, please understand we are in a battle. We have to defend sometimes, and we have to attack. Now, for the defense is the shield of faith. Faith in what, you may ask? Faith in that, faith in what the Most High said He's going to do, and that He will save us. Let's look at some verses. Jeremiah 30 and 7. Alas, for that day is great so that none is like it, it is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 74. Hear, O ye my beloved, saith the Lord, Behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for God is your guide. And the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts, saith the Lord, let not your sins weigh you down, and let not your iniquities lift up themselves. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 8. But thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham my friend, thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth, and called thee from the chief of men thereof, and said unto thee, Thou art my servant, I have chosen thee, and cast not thee away. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them, and shall not find them, even them that contended with thee. They that war against thee shall be as nothing, and a thing of naught. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Faith in that during this time he will send Michael and his angels to protect us. Daniel chapter 12 verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, 
which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. We need to have faith in the Most High in his track record. Name one prophet, one servant who the Most High didn't deliver. May not be how they wanted to, but name one. So looking at his track record, you will see he provides for his children, his chosen ones. Okay. Again, we have to remember some of us will be martyred. Some of us will survive, some of us will survive long enough to see the second coming of Christ. All in all, he will protect us and guide us until it's our time. And we have to have faith in that. Now, that shield will quench the fiery darts of the devil. Those fiery darts of doubt, fear, guilt, shame, embarrassment. We've experienced those darts before, so it's nothing new. But just know more darts are coming. Now, next is the helmet of salvation. The helmet covers your head, your mind from any blows that you may take from naysayers who mock us and say, where is your God? Let's see if your God will say. But with the helmet of salvation, you know exactly where your God is and you know he will save you. And even if he doesn't, we will not bow down to this world system. Now, with this helmet of salvation, you'll be walking around with a high level of confidence in knowing that you are saved through the risen son and the most high will come to your aid because you are one of his children. Lastly, and most importantly, is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Okay, this is your attack weapon. All of the other pieces of armor are for defense and protection. The sword is when you are on the attack. Now, when you're on the attack, you have to quote out loud the, most, the word of the most high. Now, this is where a lot of Christians get into trouble because they're used to playing defense with the shield. Okay, They can't handle or answer basic questions about the faith. They can't handle questions from Muslims, Egyptologists, other religions, atheists, black conscious movements. So they just fall back on the shield and say, oh, I know what I believe. I have faith. Okay, But the sword will counteract, will counterattack their, uh, their assaults and tear it down. So we have to have this sword as an attack weapon. Now, remember, when Christ was in the battle with the devil, when he was in the wilderness, 40 days and 40 nights, he combated him with the word, not quoting poems, not quoting quotes from Facebook, not reciting some antidote he heard from a, from a preacher, the actual pure word of the Most High. That's your attack weapon. So when we go through this tribulation, we need to memorize some scriptures for certain situations that are applicable because, you know, we can't say we will always have this physical book with us. And when you're in a battle, you can't say, wait a minute. No, 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 no. You're not going to have that kind of time. So remembering some scriptures will be very good. Now, knowing all of this, let's just take an example for a moment. Knowing who you are, knowing what's coming, and knowing you have to prepare. Psalms 23 takes on a whole deeper meaning. Now, doesn't it? So, but let's take out a few more scriptures of how to um, build our attack weapon or sharpen our sword. Psalms chapter 91 verse seven. A thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. James 4 and 7, Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Now, there are a million more scriptures you can use for any given situation, but we have to get away from all these poems and all these quotes and get back to the word of the Most High. So, this is the only thing that's going to fight off our enemy and keep us grounded in this fight. So. What you want to do is create a little journal of certain scriptures for a certain situation. So, for example, facing fear. Write down the scriptures that contain um, fighting fear, anxiety, worry. Write them down, memorize them, and add that part of your uh, arsenal. Okay, now, the Word of the Most High is one of the weapons in our arsenal. We also have the weapon of prayer and fasting, which is extremely vital. We get, some, we get some awesome access from the heavenly realms when we fast and pray, okay? So 
I hope this was helpful. I'm going to end it right now. And the next lesson I'm going to go into some of the things we need, to, we need to do in the physical to make it out of this. Okay. So faith without works is dead. So I'm going to go through some tips in the natural, in the physical of us that we need to have or at least need to know to make it out of this. So I hope this was beneficial. Remember, keep calm, pray, read fast, and remember you are one of God's chosen. Thank you. Have a good night. Good afternoon, good day, wherever you are, and God bless.